Hello everyone and welcome to the start of a brand new series on the channel where we are going to be playing as my favourite English king of all time, King Alfred the Great. Although, at this time he is Earl Alfred of Dorset, an 18 year old brother and heir to the King of Wessex who I believe is called Ethelred, isn't it? Yes, Ethelred, I thought that was right. But yes, yeah, so we're going to be playing as the 18 year old Earl Alfred. Unfortunately, the bookmark starts just before his brother dies so we are currently only the um, Earl of Dorset but hopefully we will soon become king hopefully our brother will die we are his direct heir so we'll see how that goes but for now let's just concentrate on Earl Alfred then who's only 18 years old so that's really good that we get to start as such a young character which gives us plenty of time to try and really do something huge with this guy and try and really fill some of those trees up and do some amazing things hopefully earning that the great nickname at some point so um alfred is honest which is a really good trait he's just gregorous diligent a brilliant strategist he's an organizer and he is intelligent which is amazing of course and hopefully we'll pass down to our children when we do have some um the organizer trait that's not a bad trait to have to be fair we get retreat loss minus 20 and movement speed plus 25 which is also awesome i'm pretty sure i could be wrong so correct me if i'm wrong guys but i'm pretty sure that this commander trait does switch and uh, it's random each time that you do start this playthrough so we have 23 diplomacy incredible 24 marshal incredible 21 stewardship incredible yet again six intrigue that's not the worst considering that's our worst trait and 20 learning so four out of our five traits are 20 and above which is insane for an 18 year old the amount oh my god the level that you could get this guy to if he survives long enough is insane so yeah we're the lord the earl of dorset and um Somerset so very nice pleasant areas here in England some lovely um, areas we've um, got several little areas down here the borough of Poole we've got the barony of Bath and the barony of Wareham so pretty nice Dorset um, I think is plains yes and Somerset is also plains but I think some of it is yeah forest and wetlands which is interesting so a very nice little bit of area we've got Cornwall just here which would be a nice area to expand into and take the Cornish lands so let's have a look at our wife, see how she is, because I think she also changes randomly as she's not a main character. Um, she is compassionate, generous, diligent, and an insightful thinker. And she's got very good diplomacy and very good learning. And I'm quite happy that she's got diplomacy, so hopefully that can improve our diplomacy in and around the court. So as I said, our brother is currently king, King Ethelred, who is 27, and his wife is 36. So hopefully her best years of childbearing are behind her and he won't have a son i hope i really hope because that could make big problems for us he's pretty impressive stewardship wise wow um but yeah hopefully he's gonna die soon we're not gonna plot or anything to kill him like that because that just completely goes against who alfred is so i like to role play as much as possible when playing crusader kings the stress things really help me out there that's why i don't seem to get a lot of stress in any of my series because i really always have role played with the traits that the characters get so yeah i've done i've not really maxed out any stress on any characters yet so um let's sort out our council i'm guessing we're not going to have anyone too impressive in our council at present as we are only the earl of dorset so we have our wife, um, Ethelwith. Um, what should we go with for her? We could go for the learning, but I think I'm going to go with court. Mm, I don't know. Learning could be very good instead. Of, no, we'll go with court politics. Plus six to our diplomacy, which is very interesting. Then we have our bishop here, who has 12 learning. That's not too bad. We'll leave him for now improving religious relations because I don't really want to fabricate any claims or anything just yet because I am hoping that as I said we're going to inherit Wessex pretty soon if our brother hopefully dies um so we'll leave him doing what he is for now we've got our chancellor here with a oh my god a measly free diplomacy that is that is so so bad he is so underqualified for that job do we have anyone better no we have someone with a two and someone with a zero so we have nobody to fill that role do we have anyone to fill the steward role we do have this guy who's not too bad oh, but he's our spy master at present with wow 19 intrigue that's not bad um he's the lord of paul um i'm guessing we have no one for marshall then we've got this guy with eight but he's already our terrible terrible diplomat um we could reassign him he is a little bit 
more fit for being a marshal so let's do that and we'll yeah we'll leave him organizing levies and then we've got this very impressive spy master here wow 19 intrigue that's impressive he's only 18 as well which is also very impressive 14 stewardship this guy's not a bad character we'll keep an eye on him deceitful stubborn paranoid and a flamboyant trickster okay so he has got some worrying traits but hopefully we can make good use of this guy if we do try and do some schemes or such um lieges council ah we're the marshal on it which is interesting very nice with our 26 marshal which is insanely impressive so um yeah we have two wars going on at present we're well wessex are actually in these wars not as directly so we can call off our men to help out but i'm not going to do that because i'm going to hope that wessex do lose these wars as i want to try and recreate the alfred the great um story and life so hopefully um, all of this does fall to Dane Law, leaving Wessex as the last kingdom, which we will hopefully then inherit so we can, as I said, relive Alfred's life. But they are at war with the Sons of Lothbrok, the great uh, heathen army, which has landed obviously in Jorvik. Um, they're Jarl Ivor the Boneless and Jarl Halfdan. So we've got Jarl um, Halfdan here, who is the Earl of, well, the Jarl of Jorvik. And then we obviously have Ivor the Boneless, who is very well known, I'm guessing, by all of you who is the Jarl of the Isles up here, and they're both invading Northumberland and East Anglia. Obviously, Northumbria, we, uh, Northumbria, we have Petty King Ella, who was the guy who killed Ragnar Lothbrok. He chucked him into a, a pit of snakes. I'm guessing most of you know all this, so I don't know why I'm blabbering on, but just in case someone doesn't, you may learn one or two things. Um, Mercia are also involved in this war with us. They're one of our allies, well, one of our brother's allies, as the petty king Bugared of Mercia is married to our dear sister. So that gets us a good alliance there if we do get Wessex, which I hope we do. Right, so we need to choose a lifestyle focus. We will go with the martial, as we've had a martial education, so it makes sense to stick with that. We've only got stalwart leaders so far, which gives us plus prowess, which is pretty good. But yeah, we're only 18, so that's why we've only got one perk so far. But I think when you've had an education in that, and we've had such a good education in it, I think, I think I'm correct in saying that we will gain experience a little bit quicker. So we have the strategy focus, which uh, look can win a duel, a fool can win a battle. It takes more to win a war. We get a nice little martial bonus with that, which is good if you want, just want that. Um, authority focus to rule is to make all the aspects of the realm move in unison and work together. We get a plus one martial for that. We get plus 20 dread. And we get a little increase in control, or we've got the chivalry focus. Um, victory comes not through blood or gold, but honor. And we get plus three prowess, and plus ten attraction, and plus five advantage. I'm going to go with this one. I think this one sounds like the coolest one to do, and I think it fits Alfred as well as a person. So we'll go with that. So that's that sorted. Um, I know that we've got some empty council positions. There's not much we can do about that for now. We have four issues, so let's have a look at those. Um, anyone who is new to the game, this issue thing is such, I think, a really good addition. Sometimes it can get a bit annoying when you've been playing for a while, but for a newcomer to the game, I think this is really great. It's always really handy to check this out if you're struggling for what to do and thinking what to do next. Um, so we've got two few knights, so we'll invite some knights to court. It's going to cost us 150 prestige, but we've got 450, which is a nice amount, so it's not going to cost us too much, so we'll go for that because we do need to get some more impressive people in our court. We're in line to inherit 14 titles, which is, of course, all of those titles in Wessex that are um, owned by our brother. We can negotiate an alliance with our brother, which I'm going to ignore as well for now, and we can declare war on Count Olitha of Leon, which I believe is Brittany, isn't it, down in Brittany? Yes, so we're going to leave that. There's no point us doing that. It's just going to create border gore, so we'll leave that for now as well. We've got a decent amount of starting piety as well, really, haven't we? So... We've got pretty much everything sorted that we can sort for now. I'm going to check, actually, if there was anyone interested in our court. Do we have anyone half interesting in our court? Um, who's this guy? He would make a good vassal, apparently, and he's content. 12 intrigue, 8 learning. Yeah, we could employ him, but he's not really got anything that we need for the court positions that we've got missing. And there's not really anybody else in our court either is there at present not until we get wessex hopefully so let's unpause we're going to see how these wars are going to go probably not great um i'm hoping that's the way anyway i want it to go that way we obviously want Ethelred to die as quickly as possible hopefully in some sort of accident when i did two little practice runs as well not practice runs but just general playthrough runs as alfred um the brother did die pretty quickly the first time within two years in battle i think it was to either the boneless 
and oh wow a new knight has arrived already so we'll check him out and the second time he died in a hunting accident so things were looking good but then I have attempted to record several times and things have gone really badly so this is like my third attempt to recording the first episode of this series and hopefully things will go well all I need to go well is the first series uh, first episode and then after that things can go nicely I just need us to in, uh, inherit Wessex for what I want to do with this series okay so we've got Ethelric Berkeley a 31 year old a resentful adventurer and he is patient stubborn brave a tough soldier and an organizer i guess he's pretty good 13 marshal as well nine to it do you know what i think i will employ this guy this guy is not too bad so let's where is he it's this guy here isn't it yes can we recruit you to court how much is it going to cost him to do that 25 gold that's not bad sometimes it can be a lot higher so we'll recruit him recruit him to court let's see if we can now make him our new marshal let's swap you out for you Ethelric. actually what else was you good at you was good at intrigue stewardship so let's just put you in stewardship so i'm not reassigning you because that's going to upset you isn't it so let's reassign you to that role and then let's add our new knight Ethelric as our marshal perfect at least now we can get some taxes collected as well he's only lowborn and now we can continue again and see what's going to happen. So we've got a slight advantage straight away in both of these wars. I think that's just because men are meeting up. So we can already see that the Mercian army and the Wessex army are marching together onto East Anglia. Oh no, the Mercian army has marched down into Wessex and it looks like the Wessex army is marching on to East Anglia. Now we do know that obviously um, Halfdan and Ivar both get a hell of a lot of event troops at the beginning of this. I'm pretty sure they get like 5,000 each. So that is... A lot as well as what they can call up so they've got a lot of manpower it all depends on whether Mercia and Wessex and Northumbria join their forces together or not whether they're going to have a chance to win it and there we go look there's 5,000 men there oh no the petty yeah the petty kingdom of East Anglia and 5,000 of either the bonuses men there in Norwich so they're going to absolutely slaughter that and then we have 3,000 400 men here of the Winchester and Warwick army and here's a neutral army landing from somewhere Yarl Yarl of Yarland okay I've got no idea who that guy is who's making his way over here but we'll keep an eye on them anyway and wow 2,000 men there that's also the Warwick army isn't it so if Ivar beats this Norfolk army and then marches straight onto the Wessex army he could crush most of the Anglo-Saxon resistance in one go but this is Crusader King, so who knows what stupid move the AI are going to make. I'm hoping they march south. No, he's splitting his armies instead, because that makes sense. Why not? That is a stupid thing to do, which makes sense for Crusader Kings, doesn't it? Apparently, we're being raided as well. Ah, that's over in Kent, though, so it's not directly as it's just our liege that's obviously being um, attacked there. Okay, and Ivar's leading a lot of his host off here, which is strange. He's only leaving 1,200 there to attack um the petty kingdom capital no idea why he's doing that that seems like a bit of a silly move in my opinion i thought he would have just sieged down the capital and ended this war that's what i would have done and got that out of the way as quickly as possible and then concentrate on northumbria afterwards as northumbria are already busy with jorvik no idea obviously what the men are doing up there but northumbria are winning by six percent so they must be doing something right at present um apparently we've got some new issues few knights still we can declare four wars not really interested at present i know that we're already in line to inherit a load of titles it's no longer 14 titles as um it looks like our brother has given away several of these titles the titles of um essex and um Hart uh, hereford hartford and wiltshire yeah he's given a lot of them away which is fine it's just going to be our future vassals hopefully and we've got another new knight and wow this guy is impressive he's lustful lazy arrogant a skilled tactician though reckless gallant and a novice hunter i definitely definitely want to recruit you to our court and that would cost us 10 gold and that's it that's perfect that's a very very good knight to have in our court um sighelm okay he's a catholic anglo-saxon apparently but he sounds sounds very um norse to me but we'll see um okay we're winning both wars now which is nice okay the mercian army is crushing the ivar army here because the other ivar army is marching in the completely wrong direction in typical crusader king's fashion no idea what's going on there i've got no idea what's going on up north but as i said it looks like northumbria are winning that so we'll wait and see how that goes hopefully we can get our lady wife pregnant pretty quick we let's try and romance her why not we'll start at least we can start a scheme then um a declaration of love 
The time has come to let my feelings toward Countess Ethelwith be known. I want her to remember this day for the rest of her life. Sing a love ballad, write a love poem, impress her by winning a sparring match. Oh, well, we've got very good diplomacy. Wow, we've got 27 diplomacy now with her help. So let's let's sing a love ballad. Surely with that much diplomacy, we can sway her to our side. I have found a classic Anglo-Saxon love ballad which suits Ethelwith perfectly. I practice it. I practice it over and over. Everything must be perfect. I find my sweetheart walking in the Wareham Garden, surrounded by her friends, with my heart beating like a hammer. I kneel before her and sing. Ethelwith's cheeks turn a deep pomegranate red, but she does not interrupt me. Her companions all look pleased or jealous. Surely a good sign. You have a beautiful voice, my lord, Ethelwith says before she hurries off. Her friends are quick to follow. I stand up on shaking legs, watching them disappear between the hedges, my heart beating harder than ever. Ethelwith won't resist my charms for long. Perfect, we get to carry on our scheme to romance our wife, which will hopefully give us a very good chance of hopefully getting ourselves a son and heir pretty soon. Let's have a little look at what our brother's up to. So thankfully he's not got a son or daughter yet. Hopefully his wife isn't pregnant. 36. Come on, we've got to have a bit of luck, haven't we? Hopefully she doesn't get pregnant, and hopefully our brother dies in one of these battles or something, if if we're lucky. I don't think I'll get that lucky. I never tend to get this luck when I'm recording videos for the channel. I only ever get it when I'm having general playthroughs. All my luck always seems to come just in general playthroughs, never when anybody else can see it. So we've not got a lot of gold at present, but that's fine. We'll hopefully collect some. I'm pretty sure that a decision we can make as well if we have a good relationship with the Pope is to ask for gold. So if we do get desperate, we can always go down that path. Let's forward things up a little bit. I don't want to go too quick because I don't want to skip over stuff. So we'll just speed it up a little bit just to see what's happened. More of Wessex is now falling apart as more has been handed out. So Middle Essex, London has been... Um, Gifted to someone, which is interesting. Romance, the grey one. Sweet Lady Ethelwith, I sigh as I kneel before her. My only desire is to bring you honour and happiness. Pray tell me, how can I prove my love for you? Countess Ethelwith hesitates and her cheeks turn red again. By God, I hope she's pleased and not embarrassed. Slay a wolf for me. Bring me its pelt, then we may continue this conversation. Your wish is my command. Um, We get a 62% chance of slaying a wolf. Or we have a 38% chance of returning um, empty-handed, but we will lose 75 prestige. I will bribe a hunter, lose 15 gold, and we get 12 stress. I'm sorry, but I can't do this. No, your wish is my command. We will go out and we will slay a wolf for you, my dear lady. And the scheme, Romance Countess Ethelwith gained a special gift. Perfect. So we succeeded in slaying that wolf. Awesome. Well played, Alfred. Well played, my son. You're going to have her eating out the palms of your hands. And we're winning in both these wars. Things are going well. Awesome. Well, not awesome. No, we want to lose these wars. We want Danelaw to conquer the north of England. Ah, there we go. We went from plus three to minus 27, now to minus 41 in the north Umbria war. So things are going as they should there. That's good. That's better to see. Here we've got a couple more um, issues. A few knights apparently still, but we did already recruit two. Wow, one with prowess, 17. That's pretty impressive. He's decent. Um, no, I don't want to uh, do that alliance. I know. Blah, 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 blah. Get rid of all of those for now. I will create some men-at-arms regiments once we have enough gold to do that. So the East Anglia War is pretty even at, uh, at the moment, plus six. But that North Umbria War is quickly, quickly collapsing in. So it looks like um, Halfdan and Jorvik are going to conquer southern North Umbria. Um, so hopefully we get lucky there. A new knight has arrived at our court. Let's have a look at you then, my friend. Wow, 12 diplomacy, 12 learning, 12 martial. He's just, generous, cynical, brilliant, strategic, holy warrior, intelligent and strong. I like you. I definitely like you. We can't recruit you. We need 40 gold to recruit you. We will be doing that as soon as we get 40 gold. Hopefully it won't take us too long. Romance competition. As of late, all my visits to Everwith have been ruined by my martial Elfric. He follows her everywhere like a lost puppy. His attempts to charm the lady are laughable, yet I fear his persistence will be rewarded. But it's your wife. A duel will prove who is worthy. Um, we could gain 150 prestige if we win. There's only a 58% chance we win. Um, but I don't want to gain the stress, so let's go for it. Let's duel him. Elfric stood no chance against my might. His defeat was surely embarrassing, and my beloved Ethelwith saw all of it. She has not paid him any attention since. Perfect. We earn 150 prestige, which is epic. There's a lot of armies here in East Anglia. The Mercian army and the Wessex army are still hanging around there. 
I'm going to forward things a little bit more. Not too much. I don't want to forward away too much time. But just to get these wars ticking along a little bit faster. As they are taking a little bit of time. And what we want to do obviously can't start completely until after these wars are finished. If our brother of course dies. He's not had a son yet which is good. It's good news. His wife isn't pregnant is she? She doesn't look pregnant. So hopefully she's not. Let's continue forward. That Northumbria war looks like, I, I'm guessing, yeah, they've already got the capital under siege. They've got other lower areas up here in Lancaster and such under siege as well. Uh, there is no woman lovelier than Countess Ethelwyn. In her presence, my words often fail me. None of my compliments ever do her justice. Perhaps a carefully drafted poem would better capture her virtues. I will write about her kind and feeling heart, fierce fearlessness, youthful vigour, Poetry is not my strong suit. Well, let's have a look at you. She's very, she's compassionate, generous, diligent. Let's go for kind and feeling heart. That seems to match the traits that she's got. To the kind-hearted Earl Alfred, your skin is the life-given son of my world. I wish only to hear your voice again, that I may know the depths of your love. Please be the um, odysseus to my Pen Penelope. Okay. She must have liked my poem. Perfect. Um, the scheme gains a charm. Nice. 58% now against Northumbria, so things are going well there, which is good. I keep checking our brother, panicking, hoping that he's not yet had a son. Increased military presence in the Earldom of Somerset, which is awesome. Military presence increased for five years. Hopefully that gives us a bit more manpower. I'm guessing it has. Yes, our manpower has gone up slightly. Now losing 75% against Northumbria, which is good. Um, when Countess Ethelwyth suggested a hunt, I did not hesitate to organise one. I would do anything for a mere glimpse of my sweetheart. I am stalking through the underbush, my page at my heel and my hound just ahead. It seems as if um, he has found a trail, then suddenly my concentration is shattered by a woman's scream. I am coming for you, my love. Perhaps it would be wiser to send the page. It will probably just a bird. No, I'm coming for you, my love. We're on the way to help you. Within what must have been a minute, but felt like an hour, I reach a clearing. Ethelwyth is on the ground before me, dishevelled and weaponless oppo uh, opposite her. Uh, opposite her, and just about to strike, stands a huge boar. My arrow strikes true, and the beast falls to the ground. For a moment, all Ethelwyth can do is stare, but then she stumbles towards me and throws herself into my arms. I need you, my love, right here and now. It becomes your soulmate. One sweet kiss is the only reward I can crave. Um, we share a kiss, and wow, we gain a 350 prestige either way. But no, she's going to become our soulmate. That's perfect. And we gain, wow, 350 prestige. That is huge. Perfect. Um... House head change. You have become the new house head of House Wessex. Perfect. There we go. Wessex is now ours. Perfect. What happened to our dear brother? Um, so he was died in a hunting accident on the 19th of April, 868. What a shame. I wonder if it was the same hunt that we was just on. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What a shame. Never mind, eh? Perfect. Right. New bishop. Um, we've joined those wars, which is annoying as I don't really want to be involved in them. Uh, you inherited the petty kingdom of Wessex and ten other titles from petty king Ethelred. Oh, um, yep. Can I finish reading what I was reading? We're now a petty king. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that's gone without me even telling it to. Okay, so we've got three new issues. We can ask um, the head of faith for gold. We have powerful vassals who expect a council position and we're not endorsed by our bishop. Okay, that's issues that we can sort out so let's have a little look at our court because that night that we had before was the one with intelligent and strong yes you we now have enough gold to recruit you so the first thing i'm going to do is recruit you in our court because we don't want to let you slip away and let's have a look at this guy yeah he's nothing too impressive we'll leave him for now we could ask the head of faith for some gold it will lower the pope's opinion of us by 20 but we get 118 gold we spend 250 piety. Oh, we'll leave it for now. If we get in trouble, we've got that option there. Who are the powerful vassals expecting council positions? Earl um, Onleth of Wiltshire. Okay, he's got decent stewardship. So there's potential for him to be our steward. He's also got decent marshal and decent learning. Okay, so let's, let's um, make him our steward for now. Looks like he... Oh, no. Wow. We've got Reeve Sickhelm of Guildford, who... Wow, he's our vassal and knight. He's got 18 stewardship, so I'm going to assign him as our steward. For our chancellor, who is our best chancellor, we've got Earl Elfnorth of Gloucestershire, Earl Alfred of um, Leofriskan. That's it. Okay, so it's either of these. They're both earls. 
We'll go... Ooh, you've got decent martial as well. Who is our best martial? We do have someone with better martial, Sighelm here. So, hmm, he may be better, but it's always better maybe to have an Earl sometimes, isn't it? So, we're looking at Chancellor for now. So, let's go with Earl of um, Lefriskan. Um, Marshall, we will go with... You're not actually an Earl or anything, so we will go with this guy just to keep him on side. And I'm hoping that's most of them now in favour. And Spymaster, let's have a look. At, oh, wow, we've got you, who are just a courtier. And then we've got you of Paul, who's got 19. You're pretty impressive. You're Catholic. Oh, you're Welsh. Interesting. Where are you from? You are anglo saxon I'm going to keep the guy who we had before. I do like that guy. He's pretty impressive, to be fair. Let's have a look at these guys who didn't get a council position. You're not overly impressive, I'm afraid, guys, so you're going to miss out. And you're half decent, but you're not as good as the people we already have, so I'm going to have to skip over you as well. We do now have too many holdings, unfortunately. Um, we're only over by two, so we can give away some of this land. Let's have a look. We could always give away Somerset. Um, let's go into our court, then, and have a look, see who we've got that we can land. Um, would make a good vassal, this guy, apparently, but I'm going to skip over him for some of those pretty interesting courtiers that we had. Maybe that genius strong guy. He was pretty impressive if we can find him. He should be in our court somewhere, as he was one of our knights. Here he is. Um, a wolf here. He is Anglo-Saxon, and he is Catholic. I, this guy is very impressive. I'm going to grant him the title of... Oh, we have got several of other earldoms and such that we could give out instead of Somerset. Somerset is nice. I wouldn't mind keeping that. We could give him Oxfordshire. Let's give him the earldom of... Yeah, let's give him the earldom of Oxfordshire. Why not? There we go. A wolf Mella became your vassal. Perfect. And we need to give away one more. So let's have a look in our court and find somebody else impressive that I like. Someone with some decent traits who we want to land. Um, Sighelm, was he pretty interesting? He's 33. He's arrogant. Somebody with some nice traits would be nice. Someone who's, like, content. Who's not going to cause us problem. Well, we've got Elfric Bar uh, Berkeley, who I did like. He was an... Um, hmm, how old's he? He's 32. Could give him some land. I want to try and keep as many as I can for now. Um, just for the extra income. Yeah, let's go with him. He's... We can ask him to take vows and join the clergy, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to grant you the title... And I'm going to give you... I think I may give these northern lands away. So we could go for Berkshire. Let's go for the Earldom of Berkshire. Grand title. Perfect. That puts us on seven, which we're allowed. Gives us two new vassals who have a very, very good opinion of us now. Um, are our armies currently raised? No, they're not. Perfect. One army will be disbanded. Perfect. I'm going to disband all of our armies. I'm not taking part in this war. I want these wars to end so that we can then pray profit properly as Alfred. And our clothes have changed massively since we became a king and we're now 19 and our army has improved by 800 since we've just landed those two people so maybe if we get out a couple more titles we would gain even more manpower but let's unpause and wait for these wars to finish i'd like to get these wars out of the way for this first episode and looking at gwened over here gwened i don't know i'm probably murdering that we've got prince rodri the great of um gwened um, a couple of the guys in my Discord have been talking about this, guys. I've got a couple of Welsh members in there. And it does sound like... He sounds like an epic um, figure from Welsh history. And I do actually really want to do a series playing as him at some point where I can try and reunite... Uh, well, unite Wales and maybe the Celtic people or something. But I am definitely interested in trying that out at some point. So, wow. Northumbria is chaos. How is that war not ended yet? Every single province but one is under siege. Surely that war is about to end. And East Anglia looks in a bit of a mess as well. But we're only... We're winning that somehow still. Which I'm not too sure how. Pregnancy. Fate smiles upon you. My wife, Petty Queen Ethelwith, is bearing my child. Perfect. Awesome. She gets the pregnant trait. Please be a son. I don't want too many sons. Just in case we... Um, don't get a bigger kingdom before we die. It'd be nice to be able to form at least England before Alfred dies, and then we can maybe go for Britannia after that. Rise of the Scots. Though they share common origin with the original um, Anglo-Saxons, the clans living in Northern Britain lowlands have adapted to a life in the rugged terrain. Diverging culturally and linguistically from their former countrymen, these Scots have enthusiastically embraced their new culture identity. Will they be able to thrive on their own? Interesting. So we're interested to see what Scotland does. At present, they're just not doing a lot in Alba. And 95% now in this war. Task finished. 
Earl on Lath of Wiltshire finish the increased control county. That's a good point. We actually could sh should. Actually, we're also going to search for a physician, please. We could do with getting ourselves one of those. And our army's now improved to 2,300, which is nice. We've got a decent army size. But yeah, let's try and get some of our people doing some different things. Um, let's go with domestic affairs instead and try and get our vassals on side more. We could increase development in... Where is Winchester? I'm pretty sure this... Where's Winchester? Winchester, Winchester, Winchester. It's one of these here, isn't it? Pretty sure that this is Winchester here. Let's just double check. I'm pretty sure. No, Winchester's this one over here. I'm being blind. Yeah, let's improve stuff in Winchester. Um, yeah, we'll leave you training troops for now. We'll leave you doing what you're doing. We will leave you improving religious relations for now because we don't need to convert anybody. And we'll leave you destructing schemes. Yes, so yeah, we'll leave everyone else as they are for now. We could actually. Then again, we've not got a great amount of gold. But yeah, let's start fabricating claims upon Devon. It'd be interesting to try and take the Cornish lands before they get taken by some Vikings. Just to strengthen our southern lands a little bit more. Um, okay, and some of East Anglia has now fallen to some Vikings. Some different Vikings, which is interesting. It's still going to cost us 255, just so we'll ignore that for now. We can declare war on the Yard of East. Okay, so nice. We could try and go for East Anglia. That's good. At least we know we've got that option pretty soon into the series, which is good, as we obviously want to try and press that. We could probably do with yeah i am going to do it let's oh we can't apparently negotiate an alliance at present maybe after the war court physician this world is full of dangers even to a petty king in his court as per my request my servants have inquired after recommendations now they have assembled a few options to choose from okay so we've got um gonzalo who's visigothic i'm going to say it sounded very uh iberian um he is a physician a drunkard, an amateurish plotter, a sadistic, deceitful, and arrogant. Um, then we have you, Argentelian, who is Cornish, apparently. And she's a logistian, a skilled tactician, zealous, patient, and sadistic. She's the worst option of the three. And then we have you, who are a physician, an astute intellect, uh, intellectual, uh, cynical, ambitious, and humble. 15 learning. She would cost 50 gold. He would cost 50 gold. Uh, the option is available because of my learning skill. Do you know what? She would probably be the best one then. She's widely known in scholar, uh, scholarly circles. Yes, let's go for her. This is going to put us mine, um, in debt ever so slightly, but we're going to get out of debt within, well, very, very quickly, so it doesn't matter. At least we've now got a very, very good physician. Um, yeah, as soon as we can, we're going to negotiate that alliance with Mercia. I want to keep a good alliance with our sister. I think it's because we're at war while we can't current um he will not accept apparently okay let's try and sway you then let's try and sway the petty king of mercia and see what we can do there let's try and get mercia on side come on us anglo-saxons have got to stick together pal we've got viking heathens all over the country um defeat sons of lovebrack invasion of northumberland so be it so Jorvik is now taking over all of that and it looks like northern northumbria is about to fall to ivar as well so it's just the east anglia war now which is Actually going in our favour slightly, even though half of East Anglia has already fallen. Petty King Edmund, who is his heir? His heir is... Okay, some other random guy in East Anglia, that's fine. I don't know if we're going to end this war this episode. Maybe not. Maybe we could concentrate on finishing the next war in the next episode. We've got the main thing I wanted to achieve, so now I can look forward to the rest of this series, knowing things are going to go well. And look at that prestige, that's awesome. Um, for us to create a men at arm regiment, is it gold? Yes, yeah, gold. I thought it'd be gold and not prestige. That's fine. We hopefully will get a lot of gold. But I'm going to end episode one here, guys. So thank you all so much for watching the start of this brand new series. I really hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope you're going to enjoy it going forward. This is the one that I wanted to do as my first series on the channel as Alfred the Great. But then with it being a different bookmark to CK2, I decided to wait a little while. But hopefully things are going to go well with it. If you enjoyed, guys, please don't forget to like and comment down below. I can't wait to see what you thought and I can't wait to talk to you all. And if you're new here and you did enjoy it, then please press that subscribe button. Hopefully I'll see a lot more of you on the channel. Um, so, But it, um, apart from that, until next time, thank you all for watching.